factoring. I'm going to cover everything that you need to know about factoring. So the first thing we're going to start with is the greatest common factor. That's the first thing you learn in factoring and the greatest common factor when you're factoring. So if we do example one, you look at the two numbers, the nine and 27, you look for the biggest number that goes into both these numbers. So here, if you notice nine is the biggest number that goes into both of them because nine goes into itself once and it goes into 27 three times. So nine is your greatest common factor. Also with the variables, you look at uh, the x cubed and the x to the four, always the variable with the least exponent that what comes out as the greatest common factor. And then you have y to the five and y squared, this is with the least exponent. So y squared is your greatest common factor. And now you open brackets. If you wanna, what, if you wanna know what you're gonna write inside, you just take this first term here divided by your greatest common factor, 27 divided by nine is three, x cubed divided by x cubed cancels, because it's one y to the five divided by y squared, you get y cubed. Minus, now nine divided by nine cancels, it's one, so we don't have to write it. x to the four divided by x three is x, and y squared divided by y squared is one, so you don't have to write that, and that's your answer. Now always know when you take out the greatest common factor, if you expand this and distribute this back in, you should get this back if you wanna double check, okay? Now let's look at example two. Example two is 15x to the seven plus 25x squared minus 50x cubed. So the first thing I look at the numbers and see what's the biggest number that goes into all of them, 15 doesn't, but since all of them end up with five or a zero, those numbers, then we know for sure five will be the greatest common factor. So five, and then the x's, you look at the x with the least exponent, which is x cubed, and that becomes your greatest common factor. Now you open brackets. The way I do it, I just go 15 x to the seven divided by five x cubed, 15 divided by five is three, x to the seven divided by x cubed is just x to the four. Then we have our plus, then 25 divided by five is five, x to the five divided by x cubed, you get x squared and then minus 50 divided by five is 10, x cubed divided by x cubed, is, that's gone, that's one. And that is how you do the greatest common factor. Now we'll explore the second thing about factoring. So here is factoring trinomials. That's the second thing we're gonna do. So when you're factoring trinomials, in the, in, in, in the, in the, uh, in the form x squared plus 10x plus 21. What we need to do here, the first thing is you open two set of brackets. And at the start of each one, put an x. And then what you're doing, you're looking for two numbers that multiply to give you 21 and add to give you 10. So always what multiplies to the constant at the end and adds to the coefficient of the x. That's how you factor them. So if this wasn't written in this order or a descending order like that, then you have to rearrange it so you have it in this order. And then it's always what multiplies to give you 21 and adds to give you 10 and all of them. So here, for instance, what multiplies to give you 77 and adds to give you negative 18. So let's go back to this one, what multiplies to give you 21 and adds to give you 10. That's def definitely seven and three because seven times three will give me 21 and seven plus three will give me 10. So both of them are positive. So X plus three, X plus seven, it doesn't matter if you write plus seven here or, or, or plus three there, it doesn't matter. So you could switch this around. So this is what, how you factor trinomials. Now, if you take this and expand it, if you, if you remember foiling, uh, you foil it and collect like terms, you'll end up getting this back. So factoring is the opposite of expanding. How about here? So with the same thing, you open two set of brackets, you put an X in each. Now you're looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 77 and add to give me negative 18. This looks to me like it's gonna be negative 11 times negative seven because negative 11 times negative seven 
will give me 77. And when you add those, they'll give you a negative 18. So it's minus 11 minus 7. Yeah, so we'll go to this one. This one here, as you noticed in the last two that we did, we don't have a coefficient in front of the x squared, but here we have one. If you have one, you always factor that out. And if you can't, then that's the next thing we're gonna cover with factoring trinomials with the leading coefficient that you cannot factor out. But this one, fortunately, you could factor it out. So the first thing you do is factor out the three. So the first thing we learned is the greatest common factor. Always keep that in mind when you're factoring anything. The first thing in factoring, you look, do we have a greatest common factor? And if we do, take it out first. Okay. So here we took out the three, a three in front of all of that, or three as the greatest common factor. And what we end up with is x squared, negative three x divided by three, it just gives me negative one x. And uh, negative 18 divided by three, it just gives me negative six. Okay. Doesn't finish here, this one though. This one you have to still go further, open two set of brackets, put an x in each. And now you're looking for two numbers that multiply to give you a negative six and add to give me negative one. Even though we don't write negative one here, negative x means there's a negative one in there. So the two numbers that do that for you are definitely negative three times two will give you negative six. And when you add negative three plus two will give you a negative one. So it would be negative three plus two. And now if you foil this and expand it, you'll get this. And then if you multiply the three right through after that, you'll get that, okay? So that's how you do this one. Now let's just move on to the next ones. So here, factoring of trinomials is still, but the thing here, we have a leading coefficient right in front of this, the x squared, and we cannot take it out as the greatest common factor. That's the case here and the case here. Four, we could take it out from 12, but we cannot take it out from nine, so we cannot take it out as the greatest common factor. So in, in this one here, I'm gonna show you two different methods, okay? The first method is a simple and fast method, but it's a bit tricky. Uh, once you learn it and you practice it, you wouldn't do the other method anymore. But some students like that second method because that's the first thing they learn and they want to stick to it. But a lot of students, when they see this method that I'm going to do first, they realize, wow, that's a lot faster. It saves me a lot of time during tests and, and they start using it. So with this method, what do I do? Okay. I, I do a little bit of cheat. So what I do, I go, what's six times one? So I multiply that six into one and move it there. So x squared plus five x. And as I said, the six times one gives me six. So I'm just going to write plus six. Now this and this are not one, OK? Don't think, oh, I solved this. That's no problem. That's a little cheat that you could do. But what I want you to remember, remember that we have a six at the, at the front there that we have to keep in mind for later, OK? so. Now, let's just know that we have a six right there. We're gonna keep this in mind, but let's now factor this. And when you're factoring this, you see that right away, that's x plus three, x plus two, as I said earlier, with factoring trinomials, you just look for two numbers that multiply to the constant and add up to the coefficient of x and three times two give me six. And when you add three and two gives you five. The thing it doesn't finish here, and that's why I said, keep in mind, you have a six there. When you get to this stage, you divide this number by six, divide this number by six. And what you end up with, you end up with x plus one half here and x plus one third here, because we're reducing the three and the six gives me one half and the two six will give me one third. And when you get to this stage, all you need to do, just push that two in front of the x there and push that three in front of the x there. So you'll end up with two x plus one, the one stays where it is. And the three x come, the three in the bottom comes where the x is, and you still have the plus one there. So now see if you multiply two x times three x, you'll still get the six x squared. And the one times one, you get one. That's how you always test them, you know, because this when you multiply this by this, you should get this, and when you apply this by this, you should get that. And then you go two x times one is two x, and one times three x is three x. When you add these two, you get five x, and therefore you got it right. All right. Now, how about this one here? This one, I'm gonna show you a method called decomposition. So just let me write that word down, decomp. 
position and that's what you see taught in most schools. And decomposition, what you do, you multiply this number and that number. And when you multiply them, you get what multiplies to 36 okay, and adds to the middle number here, which is negative 12. So still what multiplies, instead of this, you multiply the four and nine, but multiplies to 36 and still adds to the coefficient of X. These two numbers that will do that for you is negative six and negative six, because negative six times negative six will give me positive 36. And when you add these two, you get negative 12. So what you do here, you rewrite this equation as four X squared, but instead of minus 12 X, you write minus six X, these two numbers here, okay? The negative six and the negative set, minus six X, minus six X, and then you still have the plus nine. So decomposition, basically what you do, you change that number to this right here, to two numbers. The ones that you got from here, you know, that's negative six times negative six that we said, um, let me just, uh, okay, no, those numbers are hidden. I just wanna make sure that you see them. So it's the negative six and the negative six here that you multiply to give me 36 and add to give me a negative 12. So instead of negative 12 X, we wrote negative six X minus six X, which in turn really adds up to negative 12 X, okay? So decomposition, that's what you do. And once you get there, you break it in the middle. And when, after breaking in the middle, take out the greatest common factor from this binomial at the beginning here. So the greatest common factor is two X and you get X minus, or you get, you get two X minus three. Okay, so again, you're, um, let me just write it nicer. So you look at this binomial and take out the greatest common factor, which is two X, and then two X squared divided by two X, you'll get two X and minus six X divided by two X, you'll get minus three. And you go to this binomial and take out the greatest common factor. And here the greatest common factor is gonna be three and you'll still get six X divided by negative three, you get two X and positive nine divided by negative three, you'll get negative three. Now, when you do decomposition, always this and this have to end up being the same. That's what decomposition is. When you do this third step or second step here, this and this end up being the same, which means you could take them out as the greatest common factor. Because if you look at all of this, this is one term right here, and this is one term, both of them have two X minus three, both terms. So if both terms have the same thing, then I could take this and this out as the greatest common factor and it will end up with inside the other brackets is this two X and this minus three right there. And look at it, this is a perfect square trinomial. So as a matter of fact, you know, uh, there's a shortcut to do it, but I, I just wanted to show you the composition. And this will give you two X minus three squared, okay? So two different methods, methods uh, factoring that, those kind of trinomials when you have a leading coefficient that choice is yours in math. If anybody tells you to have to follow one way, I don't agree with that. You know, whichever way that works for you and you really, really enjoy and, uh, because it's easy or because it's fast, it's up to you. Go ahead and use it. All right. So now we'll go to the next part of factoring. So, hey, now factoring the difference of two squares. I think my, my personal opinion, this is the easiest factoring you'll ever see. Um, why? Because simply you just open two set of brackets. You ask yourself, what's the square root of x squared? It's x. So you put an x here and an x there. And then what's the square root of 49 is 7. Put 7 there and 7 there. And then you make one of them plus and one of them minus. So how do we recognize the difference of squares? Or the difference of two squares? Okay, some call it difference of squares. Some call it two the difference of two squares. Well, the difference of two squares, it tells you that there are two terms. It's a binomial. Binomial means two terms. You only have two terms here. Like here, you have only two terms. Here you have two terms. Here you have two terms, you know? 
and it's a difference. The difference means you minus, okay? So if this is a plus, if you have x squared plus nine, then you cannot factor that anymore. We don't have any way to factor this unless we use imaginary numbers and that's a different lesson at a different uh, grade level altogether. Uh, but you don't, you cannot factor the sum of square, two squares, but you could factor the sum, but you could factor the difference of two squares. Okay. So that's the trick about it. So as you see here, this is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. When that's the case, then we could factor them as the difference of squares. As I said, one of them is plus, one of them is minus. It doesn't matter. You can make this plus and this minus, or this is minus and this plus. It doesn't matter. The square root of 9x squared is 3x. So you just put 3x here and there. And the square root of 25 is 5. So you put 5 here and 5 there. Isn't this the easiest factoring you've ever seen? OK. It gets a little bit complicated, though. So here, you look at this. And you say, OK, that's the difference. But the problem, this is not a perfect square. The x squared is a perfect square, but not the 12. And the y to the 4 is a perfect square, but not the 27. Now, can we look, see if we have a greatest common factor? Because they said always the first thing you need to look for when you're factoring if you have a greatest common factor. Here, I could see there's a greatest common factor, which is 3. And if you factor out a 3, then you're going to get 4x squared minus 9y to the 4. And at this moment here, you carry the 3, and you, you recognize this is the difference of two squares, because that's a perfect square, that's a perfect square binomial, and then a difference in the middle. So therefore, now you take what's inside the brackets, carrying the 3, and then you take what's inside the brackets, and you factor it using the factoring of the difference of, the difference of two squares. So you square root of 4x squared is 2x. You put 2x here and 2x there, 1 minus 1 plus. And the square root of 9y to the 4 is 3y uh, squared. Oops, I need a bit of a room there. So let me just kind of make the two nice and clear then and close the bracket a little bit later. And then, so as I said, the square root of 9y to the 4 is 3y squared. So you write that at the end here and at the end right there. And that's basically the fact in the difference of squares is still uh, here is much nicer like this. Yeah, so I'll go through this one more time. First thing we look out for the greatest common factor is a three. Now, I take out the three, and when I take out the three as a greatest common factor, I get that inside the brackets. When I look at this, I realize it's, or recognize this is exactly the difference of two squares. Then I use that method on here as well. So the square root of 4x squared is 2x. So 2x here, 2x there. The square root of 9y to the 4 is 3y squared here and 3y squared here. And then one of them is minus and one of them is plus. One more, and this I'm doing it because Lots of people will factor this into x squared minus 9 and x squared plus 9, and they stop right there. If you stop right there, you only get a half a mark. OK, so this is, again, it follows the rule of the difference of two squares because two perfect squares here and there. And that's the difference. The square root of x to the 4 is x squared. So x squared here, x squared there. Square root of 81 is 9, 9 here, 9 there. Now, the only thing, this here, this part here is still the difference of, the, of two squares. Okay. So therefore, x squared factors into x minus 3 and x plus 3. However, that x squared plus 9, you keep it as is because we cannot, remember I said it, you cannot factor the sum of squares. So therefore, this is as far as you could go. All right. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to factor by grouping. So factoring by grouping, as you see here, we have not a trinomial, but a polynomial of with four, four terms, sorry. So when that's the case, what we do, we break this in the middle. So we break it right here. And we look for the greatest common factor from here, which is 8x. And that will give me 
at x squared divided by a at x will just give me x 16 x divided by a at x just minus two. See if you multiply this here and there, you get this. Plus, here we'll factor out a greatest common factor from this binomial right here. And I, it's three, so then I get x minus two as well. Now, since these two are the same and you have two terms, now when you look at this, you take out x minus two as the greatest common factor, and then you collect the eight x plus three in one bracket. And that's how you do the factoring by grouping. Yeah, maybe I should write the title right there by grouping. The same thing we do here. So break it in the middle. And the greatest common factor here will be 3x. And I'm going to get x squared minus 4. And the greatest common factor from here is negative 2. And what I end up getting is x squared minus 4. It's a sign change. You see negative 2 times negative four will give you a positive eight. So when you factor out negative two, the sign will change. That becomes four. Now we have x squared minus four as the greatest common factor. So we put it out as the greatest common factor. And if anybody doesn't understand what that means, if you look at this, we have two terms. Now we have this term right here and this term right there. And both of them have uh, x squared minus four in, in, in both terms. So that's why you could take that out as the greatest common factor. And I'm left with 3x minus 2 in the other bracket. Okay. Now, this one is not like this. It doesn't stop right here because I just re realized now x squared minus 4 is the difference of squares, just that. But you know, with the difference of the two squares, this here follows that. So the x minus x squared minus 4 will have to factor into x minus 2 x plus two according to factoring the difference of two squares. And then I still have the three x minus two right there. Sorry, that's how you factor by grouping. But in this one, we ended up doing by grouping and then we ended up having uh, to factor the difference of two squares right here. So the last one I'm gonna do is factoring the difference on sum of cubes. So when you factor the difference of sum, difference on sum of cubes, you have to follow rules. So sum of cubes, if you have a cubed plus b cubed, then the factor of that is a plus b. So basically the cube root of a is a, the cube root of b is b. So you write a plus b in brackets. And then in here, you just square this, you go a squared, and then you put a minus and you multiply the a and b, that's what goes there. And then you put a plus and then you square that and you get a b squared. So that's the rule. And it's the same thing with the, diff the difference of cubes. So when it's a minus here, then you put a minus here and these two become plus, but you end up with the same thing inside the brackets. So to be able to do this, my advice to you always is to identify what's your A and what's your B. So if this is A cubed, then A would be the, the cube root of this, which is two X. And B would be the cube root of this, which will be cube root of 27 is three and the cube root of y cubed is three y. Now you could start filling in these, okay? So the first thing, as I said, you write a plus b, so two x plus three y. And then in the other brackets, you square a, which is a is two x, so you square this. And when you square the two x, you're gonna get four x squared. And then the sign after that is minus. And after that, you multiply a and b. So 2x times 3y just gives you 6xy. Okay. And then you put a plus sign. And then you square the b. See, b is squared. So you square the b. Since I wrote the b right here, I shouldn't even look that back there. So the square of b, square of 3y is going to give you 3 squared is 9. And y squared will just give you y squared. And that's basically how simple it is once you determine what A and B is. Okay. Now, how about the sum of cubes? Again, we should identify our A and our A and B here will be. A is the cube root of this here. And the cube root of X to the six will be X squared. So that's the cube root of X to the six is X squared. 
And the cube root of 125 y cubed, the cube root of 125 is five, and the cube root of y cubed is just y. Now this becomes easy. So all I need to do is just put my a here, which is x squared, and then plus as it's shown me here. Hold on a second, hold on a second. Um, let me back up a little bit, okay? I, I don't know why I was doing the sum of cu cubes here. When it's the difference of cubes, it's gonna fix the signs, that's all I need to do. So here, and here. So when it's, when it's the difference of cubes, this was the difference, I was under the impression it was the sum, but when it's the difference, then this should be negative and these two are plus plus as in here. Okay, it doesn't matter what that sign is. It's when it's a difference of cubes, then it's negative plus plus. That's how I remember them. And then if it's the sum of cubes, then it's plus negative plus. So here we should have plus uh, B, which is five Y. Yeah. And in the other brackets, it's gonna be the square of A. So A, when you square X squared, you're gonna get X to the four. And then we multiply, hold on a second, I'm doing the sum of cubes. Yeah, we multiply, so it's gonna be minus, and then we multiply a and b, so multiply x squared times five y, we'll just get five x squared y, when we multiply a and b. And then at the end, you're gonna have a plus, and it's b squared, and since b is five, then square five is 25, and you square the y, you get y squared, and this is how you do the sum of cubes. So just the mistake that was made there. If it's the difference of if, if it's the difference of cubes, make sure your signs are negative plus plus. And if it's the sum of cubes, then your signs should be plus negative plus here. Okay. And then you just figure out your A and B and it becomes easy after that. And that's it. That's all that I'm gonna show you for factoring. This is about 90% of your factoring. It's actually all about this. It could get a little bit more complicated, less, maybe easier, but this is all the factoring that you will have to learn and you'll have to, to do uh, for um, high school as, at least, okay? As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, share with family and friends, and subscribe to my channel. Your support is appreciated. Till next time, bye-bye.